what the driver who is the babysitter of the automation sees. This is what the automation sees. This is what the car, this is how the car interprets the world. Okay, let's go back. Everybody ready? Let's go back just so you see it. The real world, you ready? The computer's vision of the world. And so your ability to reason under uncertainty and to take all the little individual bits and pieces told your brain through inductive reasoning that you just see a truck, a truck going through an intersection. What does the car see? The car sees a gigantic human about to attack it, two trucks, a bus, a fence, a bunch of poles, and a traffic sign, right? So, and, and I have to tell you, this is about as advanced as it gets right now. And so how does that happen? It happens because this is a data-driven world. The, the cars are taking every bit of data. They're trying to make a guess about what the world is, but we haven't figured out yet, and I still put that as a yet, how to enable inductive reasoning in machines, because right now this is a very data-driven, bottoms-up set of reasons that it's trying to come to. Artificial intelligence, these pattern recognition algorithms, if you took those crazy um, uh, Berkeley glasses and put some clever patterns on them, that you can trick an algorithm, if you know how the algorithm works, to see something it doesn't see. Guess where that's coming to you, to a set of Russian hackers near you next. So um, a couple of people related to that trial also went to, um, did a separate study to show what would it take to trick a driverless car and see a sign that it didn't really see. So these four stickers, black and white stickers, put on a stop sign, made it see that sign as 45 miles per hour. So you could imagine, and this is, I call this pa passive hacking. So I would have never, none of us would have ever noticed really those squares on that sign. We all would have driven right by that sign and thought, oh, graffiti, it, the DOT is not doing its job. And if a driverless car had seen this unattended, it would run that stop sign, right? And yes, it's in a re research lab, academic lab right now, and yes, you have to have some smarts. Your average hacker is not going to be able to do this today. But I, I'm only half kidding when I say the academic trick today is your average Russian hacker's toolbox tomorrow. It is only a matter of time before this propagates in a way that people will, you'll start seeing this, not just in the military, not just in at face recognition, but in the way that these computer vision cameras see the world. This is a robot arm that acts just like R2-D2, or at least the closest approximation that we have, the robot can respond to voice commands. It's not sexy. It doesn't have a cool little personality yet like R2-D2. But if you ultimately tell it that you want to go to the back while you go get a cup of coffee, and so can it take the plane, it can do that. It can actuate switches. It can understand what you are doing. And this is still in the early days of Alias. But this kind of collaboration is, to me, where I see the greatest strength of AI in the future. Not that we try to replace humans, but we try to figure out how to augment humans and so that we can take some of those skills and rules that are taking so much of our cognitive resources to apply in our daily world to free us up to actually use the knowledge and the expertise, which is where humans bring the most judgment and the most value. Humans in this way, by combining the two, letting the automation slash autonomy slash AI do your grunt work and let the humans be the quarterback, the coach, this is going to be the real strength of the future. Such a gap growing in this country, how we're going to fill the education gap, how we're going to pump enough people out, how we're going to introduce coding at every single stage in education. I mean, this is a battle that needs to be fought by universities, but it also has to be fought by companies, think tanks, government agencies, because we need that demand to come from on high, because as, much, as bureaucratic as you think you, um, the government is, the universities are ridiculously slow to change.